Hey folks, what's up? Welcome to this introduction about React Testing Library. So React Testing Library is a tool for testing React components that encourages better testing and coding practices. And you can, you know, already see this from the docs, right? Everything is focused on, you know, writing good tests. And, and we've talked about that before, which are tests that, um, that, well, that mimic like how a real user would also interact with your application. So make it as real um, world as possible, so to speak. And also good coding practices. And, and you will find about that in the, in the next video. But uh, React Testing Library also really um, emphasizes that you, you, know, you, you should make your app accessible. And most of the time you can simply do that by using HTML properly. So we are going to write unit and integration tests with this library. And that's also what it's, uh, what it's meant for. Um, what's nice is that the uh, test will use actual DOM nodes. So if I, let's go, I go to, uh, to Google. And um, right here, you see that we have our HTML. And if I would say, for example, document right here, and I open that up, this is the doc type, right? And this is also, this returns pretty much the HTML that uh, lives on that page. And these are what you would call DOM nodes. And the nice thing about the accessing library is that uh, it's internally also using those DOM nodes, just like a real browser would do it um, to test your application. But you know, React Testing Library does this under the hood and is not really concerned about how things are styled or whatsoever. You know, it only cares about the, the functionality of your application and the elements that are being used. Um, something else you will hear a lot in, in the React community is a library called Enzyme, which is also a testing library. And this was a library that was mainly used before React Testing Library came out. Um, so uh, I, I've, I've used it myself before as well. And then I checked out React Testing Library and that felt like so much better, especially because it encourages you to uh, simply write better tests. So um, do note that if you hear about Enzyme, somewhat similar to React Testing Library, but it's, you could say, a, like an older library that has a bit of a different approach to, uh, to testing React components. Now, before we do the actual testing, Let's just take a look at um, how a you know typical task would look like. And what you often will see is that task will have the AAA pattern, which stands for arrange, act, assert. So right here, I have a test and it starts with describing what it's actually doing, right? So it says if the user clicks on the increase button, then count is increased. Um, it's an async function, and uh, you will see in a minute why that is. And what it first will do, it will go through arranging everything that's necessary to, um, to well, create this test. So we will actually render our app component, but for some tests you might also, uh, I don't know, need some other things, maybe like some variables you will use um, for the specific test. You know, this is the place to put it. Then you got the act section, which is where you are going to do uh, the uh, simulate the user clicks or the, the user typing things or, you know, things like that. And right here, you see that it uses a so called user event. This also comes from a react testing library, just as the render um, function, and then it says user event dot click. And then it takes from the screen, and it tries to find a role with a button with the name of increase, right? So what is this doing? It's trying to find a button with the name increase inside our screen, like right inside our application. And um, then it simulates that user click. And then the last part of our test is where we actually make the assertions. And here the assertion is that we expect to find a piece of text, find by text, uh, called count value um, is two to be in the document. And right here you see we use await 
and we don't uh, use get by text, but we say find by text. And that's because um, it will probably take some time before we, uh, you know, if we, let's imagine that this button increase uh, makes a request to, to the server. And then if the response is successful, we also update the value in our application. Now, you know, that might take some time. So that's why we have to wait for that value to show up. And this is simply a timeout for, of, I think, a couple of seconds, four or five or something like that. And within those four or five seconds, React Testing Library will try to find that value. If it can't find it, the test will obviously fail. But as soon as it finds count value two in uh, our application or, or on that current screen, then the test will succeed. So you can see it's it's not too difficult, right? It's a very, uh, I think, a logical way of, um, of organizing your tests. And again, this pattern is not always, um, you know, sometimes you will write tests where you would, for example, first do the uh, uh, arrange section and then you act and then you make an assertion and then you simulate, for example, another click and then you will make an assertion again. So it doesn't always have to be in this same order, right? You can have more acts and more assertions in a test, uh, which is often even better. Um, but you will find about that in the uh, in the upcoming videos. So um, before we can get started with React Testing Library, we need to have it installed. Uh, the nice thing is that if you are using Create React App, uh, which um, which you should uh, should be using if uh, if you followed. Uh, the uh, the previous part of the course, then uh, then you're good to go. And uh, the only thing, and this is more like optional, but I do recommend you install it, is the testing playground, which is a, a Google Chrome plugin. And I already have it installed, but this allows us to uh, very easily um, select elements on our page and then get some uh, suggested queries or even some recommendations if we can improve it um and specifically i'm talking about these kind of selectors right so the get by role button name this is something you can then copy and paste and uh, you don't have to write yourself so uh, it's a great way to uh, to learn and improve your uh, your uh, the way you're targeting elements in your application so that was it for this video uh thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one where we get started with um testing with react testing library i'll see you there